Hey everyone, my name is Ashton August, and today we are here to undo the desk. I know that so many of us, myself included, spend long hours at a time sitting and working at a desk. When we do this, unfortunately, what ends up happening is a rounding and a hunching through the shoulders, the spine, a closing off of the heart center, as well as pain, tension, and discomfort and tightness in our hips, low back, and low body. And so what this class does for you today is we are going to help counterbalance those negative effects on our posture. We're going to open through the front of the body. We're going to release tension and tightness through the shoulders, the neck, the spine, and down through the hips. And we'll also be strengthening key areas like the back body as well as the core in order to help us prevent injury or damage from happening down the line. For this practice today, you don't need any props, but if you would like to use a yoga block or a strap, feel free to grab those now and I'll meet you on the mat. We are going to begin our practice today in a tabletop position. So meet me there on your mat. And as you arrive, just take a brief moment to check in with your alignment. Stack your shoulders over your wrists. Your fingers are spread nice and wide. Your hips are above your knees and relax the top of the feet. Now from here, I want you to immediately drop into some organic movement. Don't even worry about what I'm doing because instead I want you to tune in and find the areas of your body that might need a little TLC. So for me, that's my hips. Good, so you can experiment with different things, such as wagging your hips from left to right, and or maybe adding some circles that can be either small and compact around the tabletop shape, or you can take these circles deeper back through almost a child's pose position and then forward again through your tabletop. Good. If you're circling, be sure to balance out side to side and take it in the opposite direction. Good. Some of you may be feeling like a nice cat-cow would be nice for your spine. What I love about the cat-cow movements and the reason that they're so often paired together is because the two put together really work to hydrate the spinal column, activating fresh new blood flow to nourish and replenish the spinal column and the discs in between. And also, when you drop your belly and lift your gaze, coming into cow pose, we're really helping to reverse what often happens when we're sitting at a desk, which is that rounding and hunching forward. Good. So coming back through center, taking a few more breaths, experimenting with anything that feels good to you, maybe even taking one hand off the mat at a time to do some wrist circles side to side. Good. You can always use my recommendations as a starting point and then explore new movements from there as you need them. Take another few breaths, finishing up whatever it is you're working on. Good. Okay, now we're going to come back through center and you may have moved around a bit. So re-engage that alignment through your tabletop position and now we're going to engage our core. So draw your navel up and in towards your spine. See how as I do this, I round into my spine as well as my pelvis gently scoops forward. Now what this does is help to activate and engage the entire front side of my core. You're going to keep this strong and engaged here. Now, spreading your fingers nice and wide, we are going to extend the right leg straight back as if you had paint on the bottom of your right foot. If you were pressing that against the back wall, you'd be leaving a little foot mark. So as you extend through your heel, really press your right toes straight down towards the mat. Good. Try to keep your leg hip level. Now notice if you lost any engagement through your core, really re-engage that abdominal activation. Strong core, good. Now you're welcome to stay right here if this is plenty for you. If you'd like a little more, we're going to extend our left arm forward. So I'm reaching through the left fingertips, I'm kicking out through the right heel. What we're doing here is, this is called a spinal balance. So we're getting a nice elongated spine from the crown of the head out through the tailbone. We're also really engaging the core here. So a strong core will help support our low back and keep us safe as we sit at our desks. 
I even challenge you to keep your core active when you do sit at your desk, finding the same sensation that you feel here now. Good. Take another deep inhale breath, and this time we're going to lift and kick a little higher, growing nice and tall through the heart. With your exhale, we'll crunch left elbow to right knee. Inhale, extend and reach. Exhale, crunch and contract. Inhale, extend. Exhale, crunch. Let's hold here for three, two, and one. Extend. Good. Option to stay here for one more breath. Option two, you can bend your back knee and reach the left arm behind you now, really lifting through your heart. Final option here is perhaps you can find your foot and kick into your hand, helping to lift your heart. Good. And open your chest. Take another deep inhale, exhale, wherever you are. Ah, very nice. Slowly, we'll release that back down and wag the hips a few times side to side. Now, before we move into side two, we're going to keep our hips directly stacked above our knees as we walk our fingertips forward, coming into extended puppy dog pose or heart melting pose. I love the name heart melting pose because that's exactly what we're doing here. As you reach your fingers as far as you can forward, you're allowing your heart to rest down towards the mat. You'll feel an opening through your upper arms, armpits, and then down into your side body. By keeping our hips stacked high over our knees, we're keeping the length in the spine. Good. So you can let your forehead rest down towards the mat. It may or may not make contact. Or you can choose to keep your gaze forward up towards your thumbnails. And this is a little bit of a neck traction here, which is also nice as a counterbalance to when we tend to hunch and round forward at a desk. Take a deep inhale, exhale with me. Ah, mm, so good. With your next breath, we'll slowly rise. We'll walk our hands back beneath our shoulders. Reposition yourself in your tabletop pose. Now, before we move into our side two spinal balance, let's give our wrists some love. So we're going to begin by gently flipping the left hand down. So the top of our left hand now is pressing into the mat. You don't have to put a lot of weight here. You're going to feel this pretty quick. Good. Now you can play around with sending your seat towards your heels a few inches. You can play around with hinging your body forward a few inches. You can also play around with moving left to right a few inches, or you can stay exactly where you started. Let's take another breath. Be gentle here. <sighs> Good. Okay, same side. Now we're just going to turn our left fingertips in towards the right hand. Our left palm is still facing up. Take a nice deep breath. Good. Now you can stay right here for a few more breaths, or if you'd like to move in to the final stretch for this side, we're going to now plant the left palm, but sending our left fingers back towards our left knee. Nice. Now this can be a lot, so don't feel like you have to press the heel of the hand down. You can keep it lifted. You can also experiment once more with an inch or so forward, an inch or so back. But again, this is a deep stretch, so take it slow, be gentle, and listen to your body. If we spend a lot of time typing or writing, our wrists can take a lot of the brunt of the damage too. So this is a nice way to stretch them out, get the blood flowing again, and give some love to that joint. And finally, we'll just lift the left hand and draw some circles with the wrist, shake it out, and let's go for our right hand. Left palm plants, left finger spread nice and wide. And to begin, we'll simply flip the top of the right hand down, right palm shines up, and breathe. You can explore any movements that you did on your first wrist. Nice and gentle. Good, and now we'll flip the right fingers in to face the left hand.
And again, you're welcome to stay right here or for the final and deepest stretch, we'll flip the palm back down as we send the right fingers now pointing towards the right knee. And again, you'll see that the heel of my right hand is lifted. You can come down and press it down, but only if that feels okay. You don't need to do a lot here. <laughs> 